certainly in violence against women, which is been you know, has been around for many years. But this is certainly you know, being being done. And maybe this is you know something that needs to be looked at for other areas such as climate change and and disease use reduction. But I'm um, sitting here talking about climate change. Um, looking at environmental impact in the Pacific has been really part of my whole global development of the geographic community. Environmentalists, right from the 1970s, and really my first um, active work on environment is on the features in the Pacific. And um, I only really see this issue as an emerging Um, I think it's very urgent. Um, I think we should think big and see the region as a whole as being particularly in terms of uh, in terms of the size of states within the communities and so on. And that there's a really important thing for the Pacific, whether our states or organisations do it. I think there's a really need for Pacific people to reassert themselves as they've done in the past. And I do believe we can be a movement on climate change, and we should be. I think we should stick together and be a stronger voice by sticking together for some of the small island states who are trying to get the support of other Pacific states, and those other Pacific states simply may not come out in support. I mean, I'm now at an age where one can look back and say, goodness, there was a period when we all stuck together on nuclear testing, mm -hmm. and then you had one or two of our strongest states just um, backing away for development, funding, other reasons. But we still really can have a strong political movement and an environmental movement, bringing together many of our movements on climate change, and we think we should do that. Um, I'm I, I tend to, I tend to um, react if we're just talking about the capacity of organizations. I believe our organizations have become weaker. They don't perform the role they're supposed to perform. They get a lot of money in their work. But I reject the view of the capacity. We do have the capacity. We become, um, we actually can pick up, pick up on um, driving some of those organizations that we have so early. So I would just like to add a note of our own sense of urgency. We can convey that to our organizations that what we should do, we should look at different community organizations and women, many other voices that can, that I think we need to rally around the issue. <coughs> um, so rather than I'm a bit concerned we get into the smaller details, I would be interested in, in, in the strengths of the Pacific region and the voice that it should want to take now on climate change globally and that it has a lot of things to say as a leader that uniquely across the world represents more island states and the whole issue of sea level rise and so on and that it can link with other countries that need to have a, have a problem <coughs> of sea level rise and the other climatic changes that we have. So um, for me, I, you know, I just sort of see such a correlation between Iron and in the 70s and 80s. We had this huge, long-standing drive against nuclear testing in the Pacific, where the Pacific Islands recognized little countries saying, saying something about the test, which was not really negative in the world. And, and speaking as a region, of course. And so, and, you know, I really see us. And then we combine many movements, indigenous movements and feelings about land, people's sense of ownership and so on. So I would like us to really um, see those as, as our strengths and as um, something where whatever our positions are within organizations or on the ground and living affected by it, or people, you know, with aid and resource positions that we really see this as, look, if it's not happening in the organizations, it doesn't mean it has to stay that way. And, uh, you know, I think it's probably the Yeah, so for me, the advocacy 
is important in the region and is so uh, that we should think of the impact in London on the discussion and we make it an issue that we press our states to, to represent as well um, and, and, and do so and if they do not um, then we have other other voices that we should do. So I think um, Again, this whole thing of disaster reduction, like listening to the, our discussion between disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation. Um, sometimes I feel dealing with this as disaster risk reduction just will not get to the, the crux of the issue um, for the Pacific, which is, you know, and, and I, I think if we can be voices for the particularly vulnerable parts of the Pacific, um, the states that are really at risk and use those different examples. And then there are the unknown places, we just, you know, not, um, the example from Bokenville, I mean, we only pick that up when we meet or when we see them. And I think we've got a lot we can explain to show the Pacific is more so, vulnerable. Yeah, so I think we should use the whole spectrum to the impact of food production and so on, but just in terms of a few key areas like sea level rise, its impacts on whole countries and peoples. I think we've got a lot to illustrate the rest of the world and also to fight for it. I mean, we really have some issues um, that would affect this. So I feel strongly about it. Sorry, I just, um, you know, it just resonates with me that it's almost just how I felt over nuclear testing. It's, it's really the developments from the rest of the world and other countries, how it affects the Pacific, how it affected us environmentally at the time. I